Public Works, Parks, Recreation and Environment Committee meeting. The members here today are uh, please and please recognize yourself as voting members. I'm the chair, Marilyn Rossetti. We have Nick LeBron, Councilman LeBron. Councilman LeBron. Yes, oh. hello, I'm Councilman okay. LeBron. Yes, I'm okay. Councilman LeBron, committee member. And Councilman Gale. Yep, John Gale, right here. Okay, so this is the, uh, as I said, the committee meeting from Wednesday, July 8, 2020 at 5.30. Um, we have one very important agenda item tonight. I will be reading what we uh, read before every committee meeting, not that I've done this yet. Uh, HPTV will be broadcasting tonight's Public Works Park Recreation and Environment Committee meeting live on Comcast TV channel 96 and Frontier channel 6032. It will also be streamed live on HP. ATV.org and HPA TV Facebook page. It will then be made available for future viewing on the HPA TV YouTube channel. And I'm sure everyone will be pulling that up to view it again because this will be such a stimulating meeting. Um, our first agenda item, and we have with us tonight also, um, we have. Uh, Mary Zeman, uh, who is here with Bushnell Park. We have uh, acting deputy, uh, public acting chief of public works, Mike Looney. Um, and I know there's a couple other people who called in. Uh, Jim, Jim, you're there, correct? Yes, Jim Del Visco Corporation Council's office, thank you. And I see a caller three, who would that be? Marilyn, that might be me with calling. Okay, then that's the Mary, answer. all right. Or okay, I'm, and I know- I'm, I'm one of them. Okay, Kayla had uh, RSVP'd and Charmaine, someone else I can't remember. So um, we'll we'll Amy. Yep, we'll go to the first agenda item, which is the communication from Mayor Broning Bronin with accompanying resolution that will authorize the city to enter into agreement with the Bush Bushnell Park Foundation to help achieve our mutual goal of restoring, preserving, and re re promoting the park. Um, I think. We would like to um, certainly have some discussion about that. Um, how would, do we want to proceed by Mary? Uh, Mike, do you want to speak first? We'll have Mary speak or Councilman Gail, LeBron. Uh, thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. I think we'll, I can lead off with a brief introduction and, uh, uh, and then turn it over to, to Mary to discuss the uh, um, Bushnell Park Foundation. Uh, 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 part of this and um, uh, just kind of get into the discussion that way. That's probably the best way to do it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone. Uh, tonight, um, the reason we're here is uh, presenting a resolution for your consideration um, that would authorize and empower the city to enter into a license and cooperation agreement uh, with the Bushnell Park Foundation Incorporated um, for the purposes of uh, basically codifying the relationship between the city and the, and the foundation in terms of uh, activities that revolving around the protection, the preservation, and improvement, management, and maintenance of uh, Bushnell Park. Um, for a number of years, the city has worked uh, cooperatively with the foundation uh, to manage um, the activities and, and the use as well as the preservation and protection of the, of the park. Uh, and uh, similar to uh, some of our other parks and uh, uh, parks groups, uh, such as the Friends of group and uh, uh, Conservancy over at Elizabeth Park, uh, uh, it was uh, determined this was a good, a good point in time for the foundation and the city to uh, create a, uh, an agreement document that laid out a number of different things um, some of those are, are outlined in the resolution, uh, basically uh, issues such as, uh, as I mentioned, the restoration and the improvement and maintenance of the park, uh, fundraising, uh, organizing, and sponsors for various events in the park, um, managing the, the Pump House Gallery, which is a facility that became very popular last year uh, with the beer garden uh, that ran there uh, during the summer. Um, and uh, sort of codifying uh, who is responsible for what uh, is the foundation of the city in terms of operating that facility going forward. Uh, and a number of similar, similar activities that uh, the foundation will be doing uh, in order to help support the city in uh, 
Mr. Taney, uh, a fantastic part. Um, so I think at this point, uh, Mary, if you'd like to just uh, uh, jump in and uh, and talk a little bit more about the about the agreement. Sure. Thanks, Mike. So this is something we've probably worked on and off the last two years. The only reason it hasn't come sooner is just our board would get um, busier with other projects. Um, Jim Del Visco has been very helpful with this. I mean, we kind of used the framework of the Elizabeth Park Conservancy uh, license agreement. So this, of course, I think as Mike mentioned, came about, or, or maybe Jim earlier, is just that every time we would, um, you know, we raise money for the main thing we, with our projects are for capital improvements. And so when we would raise money, say for a restoration of the arch or one of the statues or the playground, we would have to come each time before the city council for you to accept that money um, on behalf of the city so we could manage, uh, manage or co-manage a project with the city. So we thought by having this license agreement, this would make it easier. It also allows us, as Mike said, to do other fundraising activities in the park, still have to get a permit through special events make sure we're doing everything correctly. Uh, you know, talks about our arch tours, our arch and our park tours, and also gives us um, the ability to manage the pump house and also to have our office there. We have not ever had an office um, in the park. Um, so we would like to use that space. And one of the things we're also doing right now with the Department of Public Works and, and iQuilt actually, is that we're finalizing some um, documents because there's going to be a renovation of the pump house. And with that, I believe last month, the city council approved a hundred, about a, I think it was exactly $114,000 that Bushnell <coughs> Park Foundation and iQuilt has raised to go towards um, those renovation projects, which um, we're thrilled to hopefully get done by the end of the year. So with that, you know, we're happy, we, we're happy to always partner with the city. Uh, we have a great relationship with DPW. One of the things this agreement always says is that any, as we do now, just a fifth makes it in writing, is that any project we do has to be agreed upon with Department of Public Works. Oh um, so again, we're happy to have this formal um, license agreement, and I know other park organizations are, you know, looking forward to doing something similar as well. Thank you, Mary. Um, um, Councilman Gale, Councilman LeBron, would you like to ask Mary questions, state something? Yes, Councilman LeBron. Sure. Uh, so I, in terms of, um, like it, can you give me like one example of a specific project? I know the, the, the beer garden, I know Mary, we've done the movies before in the park. Can you give me like a specific one tangible product. I know you said it kept the improvements, but like, how did like one example of like what this letter does to change? Just like one example, just off the top of your head. Well, I'm just saying it just makes it easier for us. We we always work with any project that we try to before we fundraise. We go to DPW and say, by the way, we're raising money for X. Right. They we get their approval. We work with them on the project. So this just makes it a little streamlines everything more quickly that we can kind of accept the funds earlier. It also gives us, we know that we're officially, the city um, appreciates and also we're official in terms of to our insurance. We have ins we, we've covered our all of our events and we're making sure that we're covering all of our events per what the city requires for insurance. Um, so it's just a more formal agreement that this is something that the city approves of, of what we're doing. And again, we always do stuff collaboratively with DPW or the special events coordinator. Yeah, I, I guess what, what's uh, arising with the question that I have, so I know, Mary, how much you guys have done for Bushnell Park, and I appreciate all that you've done. So the question that I have, you said it, it moves smoother. So... Mm -hmm. My estimation would be the other parks don't have this smooth trail or progression. What is the cogs that this is eliminating in the process? And maybe that's a maybe that's a Mr. Looney question. Yeah, I, I folks, this is Jim Del Visco. I I think I can help out. Um, one one thing that this agreement will do is that. By the way, I'm from the Corporation Council's office. 
One thing that this agreement will do is that it will allow the foundation to make to make improvements to to the park, obviously subject to approval of public works and approval and any other approvals that they need. Uh, and so basically the way it'll work is the city council will approve this agreement. There will no longer be a need for the foundation to go before the city council for all donations and gifts because the improvements are really in the form of donations or gifts to the city. And then, the, and then the, they will be governed by this agreement and then they will have to seek approvals from whether it's zoning, from public works, to get permits to do all of those things. So the, so, so the agreement will cover that. And Mary, can you give some examples of, of, the, of the improvements that um, the foundation has done? I know you've done a, a number of them in the last three or four years. Correct. So in, you know, in 20, that we've done another $150,000 restoration of the arch. Uh, we, with the city, built the $450,000 playground with $200,000 of that, the uh, $200,000 coming from the Parks Trust Fund. We've done Spirit of Victory statue. We've done Horace Wells. We and iQuilt helped fund the design development plan that did the uh, documents that will lay out the new pathways and lighting in the park. Um, so those are some of our very large ones. And there's many more. We probably, we have a list of other uh, restoration projects that we need to do. The other thing that we've really taken on in the last four years is that we have a very strong volunteer program. So we're getting people more interested and more vested in the park. And that's where we can also help DPW staff with a lot of the just regular day-to-day -day improvements to keep the park vibrant and safe and healthy for everyone. Thank you for that. So, um, and, I'm, and I'm sure there's a numerous projects I know how much you guys um, have done for the park. I guess the next question I have in terms of uh, city council knowing what's going on at the Bushnell Park. So now that this would be in place, we wouldn't necessarily know about any kind of gift or monetary donation um, and it wouldn't have to be go before council, and I understand how that could be a log jam at times. So, how would or how would you recommend, or how would the group recommend that we, as city council and, and specifically this committee, be made aware of all the ongoing projects if it doesn't have to come from city council? May, may I be heard well, on well, that, folks? This, this, oh, sure, yeah. Mary, I was going to, I was going to suggest something. Um, Huh. Councilman LeBron, one thing that we can do is we can insert in the agreement a requirement that um, the foundation notify uh, the city council of, of any projects um, that or improvements that the foundation is going to do, gifts, donations to the city in the form of improvements. So that can be put that can be put in the agreement, and that'll go along with um, the foundation the requirement that the foundation has to has to obtain all necessary permits and approvals. That's just one idea. Thank yeah, you, I, I, if I give, I can, yeah, if I can, something that quarterly we can give updates to. We're happy to do that. If we need to come before this committee every quarter, we'd be happy to do that. Yeah, and, and, and again, it's not in the spirit, you know, I just want to just kind of give my, my viewpoint. It isn't in the spirit of trying to prevent it's more in the spirit of trying to be aware. So as things are going on, we can communicate um, to folks if folks ask us questions, just being in kind of in the know. Um, you know, my, my reference point, again, isn't just trying to like be nosy per se, but just like understand or try to block. Like that's not what, it's just to understand what's going on. Uh, so anyway, that, those are all my questions. Thank you. No, but I think to uh, Councilman LeBron's point, as we are evolving with different parks in the city with some autonomy, maybe we need to sidebar, think about some mechanisms on how we certainly allow parks that are performing and that it streamlines things, ways though that we can all kind of circle back and stay connected. So maybe that's something we can talk about um, on a sidebar. Uh, Councilman Gale, do you have anything for Mary? Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. A couple of things, um, uh, <clears throat> Mary and or Mike. Um, what, what's the term of this license agreement, Mike? Uh, the term, uh, Councilman, is uh, an initial term of five years. And then after that, there are 
four, an option for four additional five year uh, extensions. So, so 20, 25 in total, if all options were, ex, were uh, exercised. Yes, that's correct. And um, is this uh, agreement um, uh, comparable to the agreement that the city has with the Elizabeth Park Conservancy? I think it's a little bit, it's a little bit different. Uh, Attorney Del Visco may be able to, to weigh in on that, um, but there are similarities between the two, yes. What, I, if I may be heard, oh. Sure, sure, go ahead, Jim. If I may be heard, if I may be heard, thank you. Um, it, it, uh, it is based on the, in large part, on the Elizabeth Park agreement, but I think the major difference is that um, Elizabeth Park has, has, a, has a, a restaurant that's an operation uh, in which the Conservancy engages a contractor uh, to run that restaurant, uh, whereas with the, with the Bushnell Park arrangement, there's the pump house, which has a lot of potential. So that's something that uh, has to be explored and developed. Uh, that's different from, from the restaurant at, at Elizabeth Park. But other than that, I would say the word comparable is, is I, I think, is, is, a good, is a good word to use, Councilman Gale. So I'm wondering um, then what the reporting requirements are for Elizabeth Park. Um, what 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 kind of reporting does does the conservancy provide, either to DPW, the mayor's office, uh, development services, or to council right now? Um, I'm, I'm I, not, I can't. Michael, can you answer that? I, you go ahead. Sorry, cut you off. No, I was going to say, Mike. Mike, I don't. I don't. I can't answer that, Michael. Do you know what that is? Um. I don't think we receive any formal communication. I mean, there are a lot of emails about events and things going on at the Conservancy that we get, uh, I wanna say almost on a, a weekly or bi-weekly basis. I would have to look into the, the language of the agreement and how it specifically addresses reporting back to the city proper and, and city council. I don't, have, I don't have that in front of me, but I can, I can certainly look into that. Well, one of one do know, I was going to say I do know that there are a lot of interactions between the conservancy and the uh, the superintendent of public works who handles the parks. In this case, Mr. Dowd, Mark Dowd. I do know that they have a lot of interactions. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I I, I, I I'm just picking up on Councilman LeBron's uh, uh, questions, and and uh, I think it behooves us to have consistency in our agreements. Um, I don't think we really want to get into a situation where, uh, when we when we do these things with the the friends groups, that you know one is is more onerous than the other. Uh, somebody's obligated to do something that somebody else isn't obligated to do. Now, mm -hmm. having said that, I I do take Councilman LeBron's point that there should be some reporting for all of these groups. Mm -hmm that's done it on some type of a periodic basis. I, I don't even, I don't know that it has to be quarterly, Mary, thank you for offering, but, uh -huh. uh, uh, but I do think that, uh, and I, I would imagine that DPW uh, does get something from Elizabeth Park Conservancy to say how much money they raised during the year, what projects they spent it on, uh, what kind of public reporting there is. Um, so I, I would ask perhaps you, Mr. Del Vasco, to, uh, look at both agreements to see um, how we would build in uh, something and understanding that I'm assuming the Elizabeth Park agreement um, is also term limited and comes up for renewal at, at a time. So maybe uh, if it doesn't have uh, some type of a reporting agreement in it right now, we can somehow figure out how to get that uh, in there. Um, but I, I, I do agree that having some sort of reporting is important and that it be consistent, consistently required of, of the different uh, friends groups um, uh, as we move forward. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll work on that, Mr. Gale, and, and I'll start with this one here since we're still working on this one involving Bushnell Park. Thank, thank you. Yeah, um, um, Sorry, I was just pulling up, if I may interrupt just for a second, I was just pulling up our agreement. And we do have in our section, there is in our agreement, a reporting requirement. 
which, oh, and it says DPS shall give all required reports to City Department of Public Works with a copy of quarterly reports to City Treasurer. So I'm happy to add, if we can, we could also add um, City Council in there. That, that would be wonderful. But yeah, I thought to your, to that, your point, we discussed it. Yep, to your point, John, I'm thinking as Bushnell Park comes on, we have Elizabeth, we're looking at Batterson, maybe there is a mechanism where not quarterly, maybe twice a year, once a year, there is, if there's gonna be more of these groups, a presentation that just says, you know, what, what we've done for the year. But I wanted to go back to, uh, Mike, I believe you, you're you the one who said the terms of what it was. And, you know, it's not in the resolution. Do, should we have that in the resolution? Uh, I'm not sure if it's, <laughs> if it's required. Um, Attorney Del Visco, can you weigh in on that? Yeah, I don't think that's not necessary because the resolution talks about terms and conditions that are that are negotiated. Um, so I, you don't have to have the exact term in, in, in the resolution, but I can tell you it, it is as explained by uh, by by Michael by Michael Looney, and and that is very similar, very similar to the one that exists with uh, with Elizabeth Park. In fact, I believe they're in their last five year block right now. But I'm I'm just thinking, and again, um, you know, there's the three of us here. It's going back to the Greater Council. Um, do do we want to have the information there in case that's asked of? I, I understand it's not required, but would it be a simple amendment or you know to just add that the terms of what what this agreement is? Uh, I certainly think we can. We can amend that and, and add yeah. it. To the yeah, I, 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 if you want to, if you want to insert the term, I don't know what other, you, you know, you, you, I think you can do that. Yes, yes. So, Madam Chair, um, I, I want to just stay with that reporting point for another, another minute, and um, perhaps impose on Corporation Council to, when looking at the various agreements. Give some thought to whether the what we should do is perhaps modify our ordinance so that any agreement that we've entered into is subject to it. We don't have to try to go in and re you know renegotiate something with Elizabeth Park when they're in the middle of a term, or you know if we bring on somebody else, it's just set in in the city's ordinances that any friends group will have to do the following things. Uh, and again, not trying to be onerous, not trying to be no, no. burdensome, mm -hmm. uh, but to, but to make sure that uh, uh, council and the public get get uh, some uh, routine uh, reporting. So, is that something, uh, Mr. Uh, Corporation Council? Does that sound like something that you could reasonably look at? Yes, yes, absolutely. All right, um, I have a couple other areas I want to just talk about, if I could, Madam Chair. Yep. Um, so, uh, Mary, Michael, do I understand that with this licensing agreement in place, the uh, Bushnell Park Conservancy would now have, or foundation, whatever it is, would now have control of the pump house and could do like Elizabeth Park, and that is rent out the pump house, and uh, uh, they would now, the, the foundation would now have that income to use for uh, park uh, uh, improvements, et cetera. Yes, that is correct. And up to this point in time, do I understand that any income that's come from the pump house has just gone into the general fund? Yes, I would I say yes, but John, since I've been there, there's been other than, I mean, when I first started, the gallery was still being run, I believe for a year or so under Mayor Sagara, but there really has just been, other than we had, um, of course, the lovely beer garden, uh, last summer, which actually posted a loss when they showed up with their cost. So uh, any, there was maybe one or two <laughs> small events that would have gone into the general fund. So you're telling me we're not losing a lot of income by, uh, by turning this up? <laughs> you are not. And now you will get income in the way of our fin us finishing several projects with um, any type of small rentals. You know, that place is a lovely space. 
um, and we're excited to take it over for office. And if there's some events, we could do indoor and outdoor. But it is a smaller space, but we're, you know, happy to market it. And because people, when they see it, they think it's a lovely space to do small events in. And if the beer garden can somehow happen next summer when we're all able to go out more, we would love to work with one or two of the local breweries because people really love that event. So if I'm one of those, I'm one of those people who really loved that event <laughs> and, yeah. and really enjoys local beer and really, right. especially when it's Hartford me. So, I mean, so I, it was that kind of an overtone saying that in order for me to make a profit, me and uh, Councilman Gale have to drink more beer <laughs> in order to make profit. No, is that not what was just recommended? No. <laughs> right. I, I think we'll have to charge maybe 50 cents extra a glass so if money goes back into the park. As long as you don't year, make the, do the chair drink any beer, I'm <laughs> okay with it. One one more uh, question. One thing I, go ahead, and then I have one more thing. Sorry, John, go ahead. Uh, well, go ahead. Say your one more thing. Huh? Mine, mine just about no money going into, but just one of the things in the license agreement that we put in, um, and Jackie Mandyke, who's head of iQuilt, we like to say we wanted to put things in because if one of us ever left, you know, we can't have this handshake agreement, and that's part of why it's a nice license agreement. It does say iQuilt during when um, Winterfest happens that we give them, you know, work with them to have them use our office space and any of that space for free. We would never ever charge Winterfest for anything. And let's cross our fingers that they may be able to do something this year. Wonderful. Um, uh, so, whoa, excuse me. Whoa. Someone's trying to reach you, John. You go, John. What is that? Okay. Uh, <laughs> we're on public TV. Uh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I'm blushing here. You know. uh, it's okay. It's okay. The, uh, <laughs> picking up, picking up on another one of Councilman uh, LeBron's uh, uh, questions. Uh, I recall that Bushnell Park installed a new playground uh, in the last uh, couple of years, and when that playground was installed. City Council did get involved, and, yep. and I, I apologize for not remembering exactly whether Council had to approve the location, the dollar amount, the actual design, uh, but Mary, you perhaps you can talk about what Council had to do in the past and how that would be different under this license agreement. Um, well, one thing you did have to approve the 250,000 of private funds that we raised, um, but we did come to you because there was, we were having some disagreements um, with getting um, her, getting the uh, approval or getting the, um, I should say, design looked at by planning and zoning, just the different steps we had to go. Um, and so we had talked to several um, city council members, and I know we were on the agenda just to get your support to encourage us and planning and zoning to work together, and uh, which we did, and we always did in the beginning, but there just were some issues about, uh, at one point, uh, planning and zoning thought maybe it should be moved to a different location, and we really loved how it was synced with the carousel, um, and so we just needed a little bit more support from the city council to make sure we could work well. And it did work out very well with planning and zoning. So that, that sounds to me like the kind of thing that if a similar type situation occurred in the future, you'd still end up coming to council because you still need to go to planning and zoning. This license agreement isn't gonna change any of that. Yeah, there could be obviously issues and just there might be things that, you know, we would want you to weigh in between um, you know, discussions DPW would have with, we'd have with DBW, maybe we agree saying, let's brief the city council on this. This might be a big project or to get, you know, you're all, you all to weigh in because we understand you're elected by the voters and, you know, we would, we would want your counsel from time to time. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Councilman. Um, I, I, 
don't believe if anybody else doesn't have anything else to Nick, add. Nick, Nick, Nick. Nick, do you have, I can't yeah. see you. Yeah, it's okay. So just are you there? Okay, yes, I didn't see you. Um, so I guess this is for court counsel. So, so how does this work now? Because we're going to add an amendment on here and another resolve, I believe, um, regarding communication. And I forgot what I just have it here. Communication and and the uh, terms. And the terms. Um, so we can't vote on this, right? We have to get another one of these. What with the amendment, because it's not it's not um, on this document now. Am I correct in that, um, uh, Mr. Davesco? I, I oh, let, let me as a, let, hang on, Jim. Let me as a council member weigh in on that because uh, okay. uh, I I don't I don't have a particular problem, uh, Councilman LeBron. If we want to, uh, I think this committee has the power to say that we uh, will recommend back to council um, favorable favorable recommendation of. Uh, the resolution sent to us with the following amendments. And we send it back to council with uh, our proposed amendments. Uh, and then we can leave it up to administration to get, get, you know, get us a revised. Uh, uh, can we, for the sake of Sherman Craig, who's on this, can we clearly state those? One being adding the additional uh, terms, five years, and then the additional four or five years. I think that's what Mike said. That's correct. Judge. And and then can you for clarity, John, say what the other one was around reporting? Sure. And and uh, uh, I, I I think we had we agreed that um, it really came down to adding city council into the quarterly reporting. That's oh, okay. built into the licensing agreement. Nick, is that uh, that uh, work? Yeah. yeah, that works for me. I think Mary had said that uh, part of the MOU or the MOA that yep. uh, that that's already baked mm -hmm. into there. So we would just have to add the language of including city council on that. So we'll have with, some a, with a sidebar though that I think there still should be a discussion whether it's this committee or a bigger group. As these groups come online, some type of uniform reporting back or looking at what Elizabeth's is, what Batterson may potentially be, what this one is, and having some set thing that is for all of them, but that can be a separate separate thing. Okay. No, I agree, I agree. Um, so I, I will be happy then, for, I'll be happy then for Charmaine's sake, if you like, Madam Chair, to recite this as the motion. Okay. Um, this, this is this is Jim. This is Jim, folks. Yep. Uh, I I agree with Councilman Gale's approach. I don't think these amendments are substantive amendments, and I think you you can do it that way. But one other one other thing I want to I want to mention, and we have a representative from Planning and Zoning uh, listening in on the meeting. Uh, there was a request from Planning and Zoning that this matter be referred to Planning and Zoning for an A24 review. Um, that that was not done earlier. So what I what I'm going to suggest is that you you add that referral in with with your approval. Um, and you can you can do it as you can say uh, that that you're going to postpone the matter pending the 824 review, or or you can say that it's, you're giving it a favorable recommendation um, subject to the receipt of the of the report from planning and zoning. I'd, I would prefer the latter, the favorable recommendation upon receipt. Um, I don't. I it's. I don't know. I can. Somebody needs to mute. I know that. Um, so, uh, did you hear me, John? Did you hear me, Nick? That yes, I think yeah. I would prefer the latter. Yeah, okay. I, I can put it all in there for you. Okay. All right. Marilyn. Great. Yes, Marilyn. Charmaine. The, the the resolution was composed by the mayor's office. Are they responsible for the amendments or who is? I believe we can do that. Yes, that's correct. You can do that. Okay. If you're voting on if you're you're voting on those amendments to add in those that information, which I don't think I don't think they're substantive amendments, I believe that you can do that as articulated by, by Mr. Gale. Okay. 
Thank you. Right. Ready for a motion? So ready. So ready. Charmaine, you ready? <laughs> okay, so we, we're gonna make we're gonna make a, we're gonna make a motion to uh, send this back to council with a favorable recommendation. Subject to the following. Number one, pending receipt of an A24 review from the Planning and Zoning Commission. N24. I, I believe it's A. A24. A. 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 A24. Okay. A number, A number two. A24. Got it now. Number two, uh, addition to the resolution of the term and options in the licensing agreement. Okay. And number three, addition to the resolution of a reporting requirement, of, uh, I'm sorry, a quarterly reporting requirement to city council. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. I oppose abstain. Uh, um, it passes. So thank you very much. Uh, I think the agenda says other business. Does anybody have any other business? No, I mean, so I just it's just a question for you, Madam Chair. In, yes. in, regards, in, in regards to having fidelity across you know, my my estimation is that this is probably going to be a trend in the direction of right. uh, yep. most parts. So, um, if we can, like, you know, have a meeting outside of this, you, uh, yep. John and I, um, to see how do we um, make that happen, and then um, also circling back with Elizabeth Park and yeah. see if there's anything that we can do right now. I think we should get the Bushnell Park, uh, quote unquote, MOU, the Elizabeth MOU. Uh, Batterson's is pretty much not done yet, but it's mirroring Elizabeth's and look at those and then think about what we want going forward. That would be a uniform policy. That's agreed. All right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, everyone, for coming. If there is no other business, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second, all in favor. Good night, everyone. Thank you so very much. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.